This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. Stay tuned for further instructions. That's faith right there, baby. We love you. Let's roll. And I have an assignment from God tonight. The book of Jonah, chapter 1. Jonah, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. The mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down to the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? Whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And my assignment tonight is to preach unto you this message, the Jonah Syndrome. The Jonah Syndrome. I want you to realize the Lord's going to chase some people tonight. It's going to get uncomfortable if you're not really living for God with all your heart. And so I'm going to pray right off the bat that every wall around your heart comes down tonight. Every barrier, every hedge, everything the devil's building up. And that angels would be unleashed and assigned to you tonight and that there would be around 1,200 young people that would never be the same again and that the voice of God would call young men and young women like he never has before. Would you lift up your hands and would you begin to receive in advance what the Lord wants to say to you in the name of Jesus. Have your way tonight. We surrender to the word of God in Jesus' name. One of the first Bible stories you will learn when you come into Sunday school, when you came into Sunday school, was the story of Jonah and the whale. Very popular, obviously, among kids. The story that even people that do not serve God seem to know about this. The great Jonah, the prophet of God, who was spoken to by the Lord through a word, and the word was, Arise and go to Nineveh, a wicked city that was known for killing people that live for God and hanging them up on the gates as you came into the city. And, and the word was, go and cry against this city. The word was not go and whisper as you walk through on a prayer walk and nobody knows you're really there. And I'm all for prayer walks if you're really bold about them. 
But the word was not go whisper silently through the city that I'm going to do something, but the word was cry. In other words, I want to assign you something that causes you to get loud and the world recognizes that you're not like them. Something's different about this guy. Can I just say it like I feel? God will rarely ever send you on a secret mission. You're not an undercover agent for Jesus. You're never called to blend in and hope to somehow win one or two. You are the light on the hill. You are the beacon that not, cannot be put out. You are something this world needs. So the mission, the word, was go, get loud with what I'm telling you, and see what the city does in reaction. Just go preach that they're coming down. And Jonah ran, not from the word, from the presence of God. Because when you ignore the word, you will soon be removed from the presence. And that's why it's dangerous in a youth convention to ignore words from God that are coming to you. Because when you reject the word, you will be removed from what you feel. And if you don't feel anything, God's about to chase you like you've never been chased in your entire life. You need to wake up. You're not a sleeping giant. You're a man of God. You're a woman of God. So he ran from the presence of the Lord, went down to the, to the dock and found a ship going to somewhere besides the place God said to go and paid some money and said, I'd rather pay this price than the price for my calling. I'm being called to a level that's dangerous, but I'd rather pay a cheaper fare and do something easier. Can I just tell you right now, it might seem cheaper at the onset to do something besides the will of God, but you will end up paying a far greater price if you run from his word. I know we're not going to shout tonight. I'm not expecting you to. I'm after a Jonah in the building that's got an anointing from God, but you've also got a running spirit that says, I don't believe in myself, and I'm going to do something different than what God's called me to do. It's a settling spirit. And Jonah said, I'm going to pay some money, and I'm going to go a different way to get away from his presence. God had to shift gears how he chased him. He was using the word. He was just simply talking to him and in relationship. Jonah, this is what I want you to do. But when Jonah rejects the word, God had to shift gears from the word to the wind. And now God began to chase him with a wind and not the word. Can I just preach to you right now? If, if God can't talk to you, he will start messing with you. Oh, I'm all alone up here tonight. Let's go, Jesus. I said if you ignore God when he's talking to you, he loves you enough to stop talking to you and start messing with you because that's how much he wants you to do what he's called. You did not get the Holy Ghost accidentally to blend in a youth group and backslide when you turned 20. God did not do that. He did not die in vain for your sin. God said, well, you're going to ignore how I talk to you. I guess I'm going to have to mess with you. And God sent a great wind out, so great that the Bible said it almost broke the ship in half. That's a serious storm. That's a serious way of chasing you. God wants you to do something in his kingdom. He has specific 
plans for your life and you have to obey them completely. You can't partially submit to the will of God. You have to dive all the way in and say, if you send me to Iowa or you send me to Iraq, I will do what you tell me to do. Whether I am a home missionary, a global missionary, an evangelist, a pastor, a Bible school teacher, or I just win people. I might preach in the prison. I might be the greatest witness at my school, but whatever you do, would you use me? Would you send and me to do something. I said, uh, I'm going to chase you with this wind. And Brother Hernandez used to tell a story about how his wife was in medical school and and they were, she was in a class watching a heart transplant surgery in Houston, Texas. And they're watching through the glass wall as the doctor took the heart out of the man, the heart that was not functioning properly, and pulled out the new heart out of the chest of ice and put the new heart inside the man. And the man's heart did not beat. And so the doctor began to massage the heart and touch the heart, trying to get the heart to respond. And when the heart did not respond, the man, the doctor, began to slap the heart over and over and over, trying to get the heart to respond. And the heart did not. So finally, to save the man's life, he pulled out the shock paddles and shocked the heart back to life. And Brother Hernandez said, there's three ways God will talk to you. He'll start, he'll start by touching your heart. He'll start by telling you he believes in you. He's got a plan for you. He wants to use you. But if you ignore that, if you ignore the youth convention message that says I've got something for you to do, then he starts messing with you. Then he starts slapping you, trying to get your attention, but never get to the place where God has to shock you to get your attention. If there's anyone that should be ready to do something for God, it's the people in this room right now. You're not average and ordinary. You're called by God. I'm going to pay a different price. I'm going to, now we know you can't run from the presence of God. I mean, you can think you are. <laughs> he literally said, I'm going to run like, like, a, like a little ant. I can just see God watching him. You're really going to do that, huh? God don't know where I am. Like, yeah, he does, bro. <laughs> he knows exactly where, he knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows where you are, <laughs> Gets down to the boat, it's windy, and goes to sleep. You know what? I'm going to say it like I feel it. When God starts messing with backsliders, they try to ignore it. Like the, they try to push it away, but they know why there's a storm in their life. Your lost loved one that used to live for God. You know, they know why their world's, they, they're not going to tell you why their world's falling apart, but their world's falling apart because they're being chased by something that they used to worship. They're not going to say that. It's going to sleep in the storm. Well, Jesus slept through the storm. You're not Jesus, bro. You're Jonah. The whole God thing. And he's sleeping in the chaos and the, the shipmen, the mariners began to be exceedingly afraid because they were in the same boat. Have you ever had to survive someone else's storm? Everything's normal except for cray cray. Oh, I'm going to preach to you. Everything would be peaceful, but we got... Looney Tune that lives with us. You're like, I don't, I don't know anything about it. You might be the. They're like, hey, hey, we didn't do anything to deserve this, bro. We're just trying to do our job, and you're coming up in here with your crazy issues. 
and this God is going to kill us because of you. Like the old preacher one time that was hitchhiking down the highway and a, a backslider in a truck pulled over and picked him up. The preacher started talking to him. The backslider said, what do you do? He said, I'm a preacher, Pentecostal preacher. The backslider said, I used to be Pentecostal. The preacher said, pull the car over. He said, why? He said, because you're going to get judged by God. You're not living right. I'm getting out of the car in case the judgment comes now. That guy prayed through, believe it or not. You can't afford to run from God. And they're trying to survive. And the Bible said they knew he was... They knew he was running because he told them. Why you want to get on our boat? I'm running from God. Uh, no. That's what, that's what I would have said if I was the captain. You're running from God and you want to get on my boat. Be careful about associating yourselves with people that you know are running from God. I don't care how cool you look and you refuse to come to the front and worship God. I'm not hanging out with a Jonah that refuses, that refuses to submit to the will of God. Young lady, be careful about dating a Jonah who doesn't want to pray, doesn't want to read the Bible, doesn't ever worship. Be careful. Be careful. Young man, be careful. If she won't go to the altar, you don't need to take her to the altar one day because I'm telling you, there's something about knowing God is in this person's life. I'm running from God, he said. (laughs) Notice... They still let him on board. That's why it's so dangerous. Because even if you think it's not affecting you, you don't know what God's sending after them. Psychologists today from this story have released something they call a Jonah complex or a Jonah syndrome. It's simply this. The Jonah complex or the syndrome is the fear of success. The fear of being one's best, which prevents self-actualization or the realization of one's own potential. It is the fear of one's own greatness, the evasion of one's own destiny, and the avoidance of exercising one's own talents. In other words, it's someone that says, I believe God can do it, but he can't do it through me. called a Jonah syndrome. Jonah knew who he was running from. He knew who was chasing him. He knew that God shifted from word to wind, and yet still he would not repent. But instead starts asking to be thrown overboard. Notice he didn't pray. He didn't say, I'm in trouble with God, I need to repent. He said, I'm in trouble with God and I can never get out of it. And I'd rather run and die than obey his calling. I'd rather die on my own terms than go preach somewhere where they kill me. Uh, This scared the mariners half to death. Because the Bible said they started sacrificing. Now, I don't think this is a very good idea. You're in a boat that God's trying to break in half, and you're going to start a fire. Is any, uh, maybe I don't think like you all. Maybe you think that's powerful that they were sacrificing. I'm thinking you guys have lost your minds. I got an idea. Let's burn the boat down. Notice that they're sacrificing. They're praying. He's pouting. 
There's, oh boy, I'm going to say it. I shouldn't say it. <laughs> There's nothing that ticks a preacher off more than trying to help a Jonah that refuses to help them while they help him. There's nothing that upsets a man of God more than trying to pull you out of your depression while you're trying to pout in it and refuse to try to get up. I'll pull with all my heart to get you right with God, but some of you need to respond when God's trying to pull on you. Move me, preacher. God's going to move you. And they're, they're trying to sacrifice to a God they don't know for a guy that refuses to pray to a God he does know and claims to fear. He was lying through his teeth. He didn't fear God. He's running from God. Your actions will outweigh your words when you say what you fear. Well, I fear the Lord. Do you fear him more than COVID? Well, I fear the Lord. Do you fear more than the government? Well, I fear the Lord. Do you feel him fear more than the peers at your school? I want to know who you really fear. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy. When you start to fear God, you're smarting up. You're, you're connecting. He said, don't be afraid of the one that can destroy your body. Be afraid of the one that can send you to hell. Do you realize who's in the room right now? Do you realize who you worship? Don't get an attitude with the one who made you in his image. <laughs> and y'all pray while I pout. Well, I'm just going to be real. I'm already out here, so. It's like the notorious kid at youth camp that everyone's worshiping, and you're sitting there. And you know better. I'm not talking about the guest. I'm not talking about the new kid. I'm talking about the one that wants all the attention. They went, oh, yeah, you're in here. I know you're in here. I saw you last night, and I saw you today. The one that has to stand out with the rebellion. You better be careful how much you rebel because God's about to shift gears from wind to water. Because if he can't get you with the word and he can't get you with the wind, watch out because here comes the water. Still love me, some of you? The ones that hate me, that's the one I'm, I'm preaching to you. Throw me overboard, he said. That's one way to get deeper. <laughs> and so God goes from word to wind. And now Jonah starts sinking in his thinking and sinking in the sea. You'd think right about here is when you start thinking, uh, I'm sorry. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> I probably need to repent. <laughs> Just saying, I would be. I'm sure most of you would be. I would have never come up with the, the idea to throw me overboard. Like, apparently, he couldn't swim. Like, that's never going to, I think the answer is I need to be thrown. Not even jump. Why not jump, bro? You know why? You want to blame people for why you're sinking. You want to blame the church for why you backslide. You want to blame somebody for why you're bitter. Oh, I wish I would. 
It's a victim spirit that says, I'm not living for God because she did this. And he, get over yourself. That's a lie. And you know it. You're running. You're running. Throw me overboard so I can blame you for why I'm not in the boat when I'm 25. Quit on me. Give up on me so I can use your name every time church comes up in my spirit of why I don't go back. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, Brother Brown. I feel something. This is not in my notes, but I'm in the spirit. I tell some young people, it's time to let some things go and some people go from your past that are holding on to your future. You don't know what they did. I'm sorry that they threw you over, but stop letting them have your destiny. Stop letting them have your future. You can't really fight water. <laughs> you can swim a little while, but if you're in a storm, <laughs> you're going to start sinking eventually. Sinking lower and lower and lower. And not screaming, even in his mind, help me, forgive me, I'm sorry. Just sinking. You'd be shocked at the pride. That when people get offended or upset at God, they know they're going down and they still refuse to break. Some people know they're headed to hell. In fact, Joan even said, I was trapped in the belly of hell. <laughs> he knew where he was going. He's sinking down and down and down and that still didn't convict him. First of all, I'd like to take a time out to say, what? how awesome is the mercy of God? That he keeps... chasing me, chasing you. And so God said, water's not working. I think I got something that will. And God went from word to wind to water to whale. Thought of those four W's all by myself. Class is in session. It wasn't that God had to make a whale because Jonah was sinking and he wanted Jonah to do something the Bible said God had, past tense, had prepared a fish. Meaning he knew you'd run, bro. He knew you'd quit. He knew you'd blame people. He knew you'd be in the water. So before it even started, when he started calling you, he knew where you'd run. He knew what you'd say. He knew who you'd blame, and he still wanted to do something for you. <laughs> In the Hebrew, prepared means to count or to reckon, to assign or to tell. So he assigned this fish. Now, I'm just going to say it. If you put me in a whale for three seconds, I'm going to pray the house down. Jonah was in there three days. I would have sent a shark. Here's why. A shark circling Jonah would have given Jonah a prayer life. 
I'm sorry. You see that fin come out of the water? You're right, I'm wrong. Just swallowed him whole, didn't even chew him. <laughs> That's powerful right there. God's like, don't chew. <laughs> That's not in the notes. It's powerful. It changed your life. Three days, no praying. Dark. I'm going to guess the guts of a whale don't smell the best. There's no Jonah cologne out there. That smells good, bro. What is that? Jonah. Oh, i got to get me some of that. It's made out of whale blubber. No. Three days. Not praying. Man, God's merciful. He's sitting in the dark, still pouting. When he starts to pray, he goes straight into that victim mentality. The Lord can't see me. I'm cast out of your sight. He starts talking about other people and their lies and their vanity. And... None of that change. See, there are people that run from God that still pray. They call it praying. It's just, just bitterness coming out of them. God, you don't care about me, God. It's like, dude, you're breathing. He cares about you. And he's praying all these things and nothing's changing. But then... He prays something. I want to show you something. He prays a prayer that changes everything. There is a prayer you can pray that will get God's attention. It's Jonah 2. Can you put it up for me? Verse 9. Jonah 2, verse 9. I want you to see this. He said, in, this, in the whale, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Here's the part I want you to see. I will pay that that I have vowed. Apparently somewhere in Jonah's past, he made a vow to God that if you send me anywhere, I'll go. If you call me anywhere, I'll go. And guess what's crazy about God? He believes you when you pray that. Lord, use me. Then God starts using you and you get mad. Because you're not getting blessed enough when you're being used. I don't know if you pray, I'll go to Nineveh if you send me. I'll go to the uttermost part of the earth. I'll go to South Dakota. I'm not being funny. Somebody. Wherever you send me, I believe I can take that spot and become Abraham and turn it into the center of the world. You can send me to a desert. I'll have revival in a desert. You can send me to the ice. I'll have revival in the ice. You can send me to the water wherever. Just send me, God, and I'll go. And all the other prayers didn't stir up God, but then Jonah said, I know what I told you, God. I will pay what I have vowed. The vow is easy. The following through is difficult. I'll fast, God. That's awesome. Talk to me on day three. I'll pray all night, God. Awesome. Talk to me at 4 a.m. 
I'm going to read my Bible through this year, God. Awesome. Talk to me when you get to Leviticus. (laughs) And all of a sudden, God spoke to the fish. He didn't speak to Jonah. He spoke to what swallowed Jonah. He said to tell you what the situation and the environment that you think has swallowed you whole actually works for me. Oh, you're not. The thing that you think you can never get out of to do my will is actually submitted to me. The thing you're blaming the devil for. Well, I I would do this, but I don't have any connections. I would be trying to be a preacher, but nobody knows me. My family's dysfunctional. My family's broken apart. And God spoke to the thing. Did you realize the thing could hear the voice of God? The fish could hear the situation that's taking you in, the darkness that's consuming you can still hear the voice. That's why winds and waves bow down when he says, peace, shataya, be still. That's why depression has to let go when God says it's time to deliver them because depression can hear Jesus. Anxiety can hear Jesus. Demons can hear Jesus. It doesn't matter what's on you, what's around you, when God speaks. And the fish vomited. This is wonderful. He didn't spit Jonah up. He launched that dude. I don't know what a whale looks like when it gets nauseous. But apparently humans make whales nauseous. And when he launched Jonah, he didn't launch him back into the water. He didn't launch him back into the wind. He launched him on the land. God said to tell you that what's holding you is actually a vehicle under the surface that's positioning your life. And when I speak to your destiny, it will launch you at the right time, at the right place to do exactly. And the fish vomited out. I don't know if it was like 20 feet. I just, I, you know, me, I'm, I'm just like, I start picturing it and thinking about it. Like, how far did he fly? That's where that song came from. I believe I can fly. It was Jonah that wrote that. Because he couldn't run, I believe I can swim. Just. On dry land. And in church this morning, God gave me the end of this. Can you put up chapter 3, verse 1? Jonah has just hit the beach. Boom. And the word. He's, he used to talk to him with the word. But, but then he had to go to the wind. 
and, and the water and the whale. But, but because of what Jonah just prayed, he goes back to the word. Oh, I'm going to preach restoration to somebody in here right now. God wants to talk to you like he used to talk to you when your heart was soft before him. God wants to talk to you like he did when he filled you with the Holy Ghost and you knew I don't have, I've never felt anything as pure as peaceful as joyful put it back up for me and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying keep going arise go unto Nineveh wait a second stop notice what's not there it wasn't just be thankful I saved your hide It wasn't, I saved you, but I've replaced you. You messed up too much. Oh, shut up. You, you fooled around too long, and so now I've had to find somebody else. Oh, I've come to preach to the condemned in here. He didn't say... Arise, go back home, Brother Brown, and be thankful that I saved your life. Just be thankful you're still in church. He didn't say that. He said, your destiny never gave up on you. Wait. Could God have replaced Jonah? Yes. Can God replace you and I? Yes. But he loves you so much that on a youth conference, when you're straight up running, he's letting you know, I don't want to replace you. I want you to do what I called you to do. Watch. Go into that great city and preach. Before it was go cry. He said before you were going to have to, but I put an anointing on you now. I've got a boldness on you now. You're not going to go cry. You're going to open your mouth and preach. Jesus is about to come hit this city. Preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. See, before it was cry against it because their wickedness is up before me. But now it's preach what I tell you to preach. Go to verse 3. This is the most powerful part. So Jonah arose. Watch. The Ninevites worship the fish god. Half man, half fish. And when they saw the man come out of the fish, they were afraid of what this man was going to preach because apparently he served a bigger god than the god they worshipped. And so everything was strategic. The hell you're coming out of is not accidental. It's, it's anointed for the exact place that God's going to assign you. And God said to tell some of you who are abused and you've lived in a painful house of torment that when it's time, I am going to launch you with a testimony. And when you step up, don't you duck, don't you dodge your head, but shut up, but lift up your voice and tell Nineveh, there's a revival coming. I've survived something I should not have survived.
Stand to your feet. Your destiny is still breathing. He said, tell him, I will use wind, I will use water, and I will use whales, but I'd rather use my word. And if you'll heed my word, I will go with you. You might be 16 now. The door may not open until you're 26, but you need to make up your mind. Whatever God tells me to do in this last day. We don't need spiritual Adams and Eves that are trying to blend in with this world to change the world. We need a Noah to rise up. We need a Joshua to stare down at Jericho. We need Moses to look Pharaoh in the eye. We need Daniel to say, I don't care where you throw me. We need a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to say, I will not bow. We need some young people. If you're perfect, I have not preached to you. If you've not dropped the ball, I'm not preaching to you. If you've never messed up and ran from God, I'm not preaching to you. But I'm preaching to somebody who doesn't believe in themselves because they've got a Jonah complex. But the Lord said to tell you, Here's how you need to start your prayer and your words with the enemy. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. The Lord said, tonight I will cause the whale to launch the Jonah, and I will give my word. Are there any young people that will charge the altar and say, God, send me? Are there any young people that will run out of their pew and say, God, wherever, whenever, however, choose me? If you're walking up here bored, I'm not preaching to you. The wind's going to have to get your attention. The water's going to have to mess with you a little bit. But I'm looking for a Jonah. You may not be popular. People don't know your name. You may not believe in yourself. I hear one or two crying out. God didn't say go whisper. There it is. Let the cry begin. Let the desperation be unleashed. Let the prayer meeting start. Somebody on a mission from God. Somebody has a mission from God. Somebody has a mission from God. You're not going through what you're going through accidentally. Your mess is connected to your message. Your mess is connected to your mission. Your failure is connected to your destiny. There's some preachers in here. You're not famous among people, but you're famous in heaven right now because the call of God's on you. There's some missionaries in here. 
Nobody knows you but Jesus. Will you go? If I send you where you don't want to go, will you go? Will you answer me? Will you respond? I know you're going to go scared. I know you're nervous. I know you're worried. I know you've got questions. I'll take care of those. But will you go? We don't need less preachers. We need more. We don't need less preachers' wives. We need more. We don't need less intercessors. We need more. We don't need less prayer warriors. We need more. Come on, Jonah. Stop being a hot shot. Come on, Jonah. You came to youth convention looking for a chick. Come on, Jonah. I'm talking to you. You need to straighten up. Get your eyes on God. Come on, Jonah. Come on, Jonah. Come on, young lady. If you use anyone, Lord, please use me. If you choose anyone, God, please choose me. If you, oh, God, please, please don't replace me, God. Please don't replace me, God. Somebody ought to pray that right now. Please don't replace me, God. Please don't find somebody hungrier, somebody more submitted, somebody more broken, somebody more in tune. Please, God. Please, God. My flesh may not like it. The ride might be uncomfortable. The whale, it's uncomfortable. But, oh, God, give me one more chance. There's a prayer meeting trying to break out in here right now. Break. Guys, you need to ignore every girl around you. Young lady, ignore every guy around you. No one's watching you. Stop trying to look cool while you pray. Stop trying to shut you. Stop trying to look, look just right as you pray. Some of you are trying to impress people by how you pray. Ignore everybody around you right now. Who cares what they think about you? They didn't die on a cross for you. They didn't shed blood for your sin. If you're looking around, if you're looking to see people watching you, you better watch out. There's a whale circling. You better watch out. You got your mind on the wrong thing. You got your focus on the wrong thing. Don't worry about others. Just worry about, can I still hear the word? Can I still hear his voice? Can he still talk to you? Can he still challenge you? Can he still motivate you? Can he still inspire you? Can he still push you, pull you? Can the Spirit still prompt you? Take it to another level. Take it to another level. Take it to another level. Ah, Sata, take it to the next level. Come on, raise your sincerity right now as you're praying. Raise your sincerity. Raise your focus. Somebody intercede for your city right now. Somebody intercede for your state right now. Somebody intercede for your youth group. Intercede for your church. Intercede for your pastor. I have 
decided to follow Jesus. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You might think you're messed up. You might think you're washed up, Jonah. But your destiny is still calling your name. Your city is still calling for your Sending, send to Jonah. Nineveh is screaming in the dark. Send to Jonah. Send us a Jonah. Send us a Jonah. Don't try to figure out when it's going to be. Don't try to figure out where it's going to be right now. Don't worry about the when or the where. Just worship the who. Worship the one that's going to call you. Worship the one that's going to direct your steps. Anywhere, anytime, Jesus, use us. I will pay that that I have vowed. You have God's attention when God has your attention. And God has big plans for you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord deliver them out of them all. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more eternal and exceeding way to glory. Everything you've been through is working. All things work together for good. The good stuff, the bad stuff, it's all connected for your destiny. Your testimony will be unique. Your message will be unique to your mission. You will connect with your Nineveh. You will connect with your Nineveh. Your Nineveh will listen to you. Nineveh will listen to you, Jonah. Nineveh. Will submit to you, Jonah. Nineveh will fast when you say fast, Jonah. When you preach, Nineveh, <laughs> Nineveh will do what you say. That's your signal, you're called there.
God, I don't ever want to be in a place where you have to chase me. I want to hear your whisper. I want you, if you want a prayer life, I want to say something right now in the Holy Ghost. If you want a daily prayer life, where you have a relationship with God for more than whatever you have at church or or your one chapter of the Bible reading a day or whatever you're doing, if you want a real walk with God, where you meet him every day, I want you to raise your hand. If you don't have that and you want that, be honest. I want this man to pray right now for an unleashing of consecration and prayer. God's about to whisper to you in the darkness of the morning, and you're about to walk with God like you never have before. Come on, let's lift our hands and our voices right now. Lord, I pray that you would open up the windows of heaven. I pray you roll back the roof of this building. And I pray, God, that you would fixate a ladder between heaven and earth. And may the angels of the Lord ascend and descend upon this place. And I pray, God, that this would be a generation with consecration. Lord, we are one of passion. We are one of zeal. But, God, we will be one of prayer. Lord Jesus, I will not talk about prayer. I will pray. Lord, I will not think about praying. I will pray. God, I would rather de- die than miss my daily devotion. Lord, let a spirit of Daniel rise in this house regardless of the law of the land. I would rather pray. I would rather pray than anything else. Come on, open it up right now. Come on, open it up right now. Messi on that bay. Lord, I will pay that which I vow right now. Lord, I am committed to wake up and pray. I am committed, Lord. I will plan a time and a place, and I will honor that time. I will honor that place. Lord, I will be present. I will not be found absent, God. I will be found praying. And I release a spirit of fasting right now in this room on every young man and every young lady. You will be able to fast like you've never fasted before in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. There's about to be fasting. There's about to be praying. There's about to be fasting and praying. Fasting and praying. Fasting and praying. God's going to call you. God's going to call you. You have to consecrate yourself. You never fasted before. You get your pastor's covering. You never done one day. Don't try to go on a 40-day fast. But you start with covering your youth pastor, your pastor. Find out what they think you should do and start stepping out of the boat. I am sick of people saying I have to wait till I'm 30 to get consecrated. You're 18, you can do it. You're 16, you can do it. You can step out and say, God, I'm ready. A spirit of Daniel upon this audience in the name of Jesus. Three times a day he prayed when they said the lions are waiting as he did a four time, meaning whether there's a lion's den or no lion's den, I'm going to pray every day. He shall not. Whether everything's going good or going bad, I'm talking to God. I'm bowing before him. I'm submitting. I'm consecrating my life. I leave you with this. I'm flying out in the morning, and we're doing the Texas one tomorrow night. But I leave this Midwest convention with this. If you will do what was just prayed over you, if you will not just hope to do it and talk about it, but if you'll start doing it, 
one year from now, you will not recognize who you were this at this conference. You'll be a completely different person. You will be a warrior. Demons will be trembling every time you walk in the room. You will have authority. You will have dominion. You, you have it, and you need to operate in it. If you will win the war secretly, if you win the war privately, God will use you publicly. Stop looking for the stage and bypassing the altar. This is what you need the altar. Start saying, God, I may never be famous, but put me on the altar. Use me. Because if you're looking for fame, you're already going the wrong direction. Soto, I pray over every one of your minds right now. I pray for encounters with angels. I pray the word would start talking to you like it's never talked to you. I pray you'd, you'd get with your pastors preaching like you never have. I pray you'd serve like you've never served. I pray you'd get involved like you've never been involved. I pray you'd get hungry in the darkness when no one's around. It's easy to pray when you're surrounded by 1,200 friends in the altar. But I pray that you would rise from the comfy bed when no one's in the room and say, God, I will pay. Do you want it? Do you want the real thing? Go for it then. Go for it. You can do it. You can do it. Somebody's going to do it. Might as well be you. Someone's going to fast and pray. Might as well be you. God's going to use someone. Might as well be you. Never let it be said that he passed by you. Because somebody else in your youth group was hungrier. Never let it be said he couldn't use you because somebody else said, I'll do whatever. I think what happened tonight was the distracted became focused. The disconnected are connected. The discouraged are encouraged. Those that were tormented are going to triumph. And those that had anxiety have anointing. And those that were panicking have a prayer life now. Those that were depressed are going to defeat the enemy. You've got what it takes. May the Lord bless you. Would you clap your hands one more time? Lift up your voice. Do something great for God. lady. Lot's wife would scream to you tonight. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Run to Jesus. Run to your mission. Run to your calling. Run to your destiny.